Henrik Fogg.
Anybody got a song on your heart tonight? Anybody? All right, turn in your Bibles. I'd give them enough time, didn't I? <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6. We got two more pieces of armor, and then we're going to the family. God's been putting that on my mind week after week after week. Ephesians chapter number 6, I really feel like that this is a very, very, it's all important, but I feel like this is a super important uh, part of the whole armor of God. I feel like this is what uh, we talked about, the truth, and we talked about the breastplate of righteousness, and we've talked about your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel we, talked, we preached about the shield of faith. I enjoyed preaching about that. God showed me some things myself there. I felt like that was a big help. But I think uh, those things help prepare us. But I think this right here, with this piece of armor right here, is where we have uh, our biggest problems with. Amen. So hopefully I'll say something tonight through the word that will help you out or give you a little bit of encouragement. But in verse 17, it says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You can be seated. But I begin to think about a helmet. I mean, we all know what a helmet is. I mean, it's a piece of, it's a piece of gear that uh, when I get on my motorcycle, uh, the state of North Carolina, uh, thank God, makes, if you ride a motorcycle, makes you wear a helmet. They don't make you wear a, a carry a shield. Uh, they don't make you wear a breastplate. Uh, they don't make you wear shoes. Uh, none of that is illegal not to wear. But they think it's so important uh, that you have a helmet on, uh, Stacy, that it's the law. You have to have a helmet on uh, to ride a motorcycle in North Carolina. Also, these football players and everybody else you see, I mean, skateboarders, pro bicyclers, 
whatever. Uh, they want to have something uh, to protect your head. I mean, you can get punched in the heart and that won't kill you, but you can get punched in the head and it can kill you. I mean, when you that's your nervous system. That controls your whole entire body, your mind and your brain uh, controls that. So it's super important uh, that when we're playing a sport that's uh, uh, combative or, or, or is dangerous that you got a protection on your head. But more so than that, God's begin to show me in the weeks to come into this that one of the most important things Things we can do is have on the helmet of salvation, amen, something uh, to protect our mind and protect our head uh, from the things of the devil because that's where he uh, likes to talk. But he talks about the helmet of salvation. Now, we all know what salvation is, but I want to read it to you anyway. Salvation means being saved from danger. Hey, somebody help me, amen. Thank God for salvation. Can you not say that tonight? We, hey, but let me tell you what. It says saved from danger, from evil, from difficulty, from destruction, amen. That sounds about what my life used to be, amen. It was full of danger. It was full of evil. I was headed down a road of destruction. But thank God, amen. After salvation, God saved me from that. No longer do I have to worry about uh, the dangers in my life. I'm talking about a sinful danger. No longer am I uh, out here running around hand in hand with evil. But through salvation, uh, brother, you're God rescued uh, me from that. There's a lot of folks say, well, I don't do this and I don't do that. I don't care if you're not saved, amen. If you don't have salvation and you don't know Jesus Christ and the free pardon of sin, uh, you can be living a life, brother laddie, uh, that looks just like uh, the life of a Christian, amen. But still yet, uh, you're hooked up with evil, amen. And the only way to get away from that is to repent in an old-fashioned altar, amen, and make Jesus Christ uh, the Lord of your life and put on the helmet of salvation. But man, I, I gotta, that bless my soul just to read that in the Bible that salvation being saved from danger, rescued from evil, from difficulty or destruction. I was on a path of self destruction. Can I get a witness? Amen. But through salvation, amen, Jesus Christ spared my life and he didn't leave me in that situation. Amen. I begin to think about a uh, somebody that's on a pirate ship or a boat and they go overboard amen and they're out there in the sea and they're drifting away amen it would be a blessing if they told you a buoy wouldn't it it'd be a blessing but what would be more of a blessing if they told you that buoy amen and kept the sails in the wind and left you there they could say hey I helped that man He's better off than he was. See, that's what the world did to us, amen. When we was lost and undone, Big Jim, that th you know, and the devil will throw you a life buoy. Yeah, the devil will throw you a life buoy sometimes. But you know what? Man, if I'm out there, Brother Jim, and I'm out there uh, lost at sea, and they throw me a life buoy, hey, I'm going to be like, whoo, praise God. But if I see that boat keeping on going, amen, I'm going to be like, oh, God. Oh God, I'm just about as bad off as I was before. Amen. Thank God that ain't salvation, amen. I'm glad Jesus don't come by and leave us in the same uh, situation uh, that we was in uh, before we got salvation, amen. But my Bible said he pulled us out of the muck and the mire. He cleaned us up, uh, set our feet on a solid foundation and established our going. You know what that means? He didn't leave us out there with a little old life ring. You know what he did? He went back and said, hey, and I'm going to save you, amen. I'm putting you on my ship. I'm taking you with me. Let me get you established. Let me get you heading in the right direction, amen. I'm glad God didn't save me and I get up from an altar, amen, and don't go which way to go, amen. But you know what? He got me saved in a good old-fashioned church, amen. I want a preacher to tell the truth, amen. And through the Word of God, uh, help me set my eyes on the prize. Help me get established and going in the right direction, amen. Amen. Hey, thank God uh, for salvation tonight. Before salvation, man, I was headed for destruction. I was headed for danger. I was headed for there wasn't no hope. But thank God the lifeboat come by one day. You know who the lifeboat is? That's Jesus Christ. Like I said, he didn't just throw me a little bit of help, but he put me in his boat. Amen. And you know what I'm going to do, Brother Mike? I believe I'll just stay in the boat with him till this thing anchors up on the other side. Amen. 
We went on a cruise one time. Didn't much like it. Probably won't never go back on one. It just wasn't. It just, it, I just didn't care for it. There wasn't no Christian stuff going on on our much. I mean, we didn't do nothing wrong. And I ain't saying it's wrong to go, but it ain't something that's just Christian based. Hey, man, I just didn't really enjoy it. I ain't getting on you if you want to go, but I'll probably never go on another one, you know. But you would go out there, uh, Ricky, and I'm just no country boy. had not hard never been out of for a whole lot. And we'd get that dock out boat with in another country. Hey, man, I was kind of scared to get off, Duck. I was. I was nervous about getting off. I was like, God, what if I get off? I mean, my, you know how my mind works. I'm like, I'd be down there at the beach, hey man, getting one of them rip currents. It'd take me down the beach and i come back and the ship be gone. What if I go in here to town, uh, some old boy runs into me, starts a fight. We get in a fight. They throw me in jail and the ship leave me over here. I mean, what if I'm just down here and twist my ankle and I can't get back, hey man, and the ships are going and I'm screaming. They ain't going to wait for me. They ain't going to say, hey, we got this whole ship uh, full of people, but there's some little old redneck from all four that nobody don't know. Let's make sure we we ruin everybody's trip uh, so we can get him. I was kind of scared they didn't get off a boat. Hey man, I don't want to get off a boat. Hey man, I, I don't want to get off a boat nowhere because you never know uh, when you get off the boat. Uh, the captain may say, "All aboard! This thing's a leaving here, and you'll be left off the boat somewhere." Hey man, I hadn't thought about none of this this week. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad I'm on the ship. Hey man. I'm glad I know. Hey, and I didn't even know who was going, Stephen. I'll be looking out the wind and it's just all water to me. If old Captain would have fell over dad and then said, hey, son, can you get us back to Charleston? I've been like, ain't no way, man. Don't, don't leave this thing with me. I don't know where I'm going. I'll have us down there to the Bermuda Triangle. We won't have no hope in. You know what's wrong with a lot of folks' life? They say they got salvation, amen. But they won't give the controls over to the captain. They want to drive the ship, amen. Thank God I do have enough sense to know that I don't know where I'm going uh, without him, amen. He's the captain of my ship, amen. I'm just going to stay on board that he docks that thing over across Jordan, ain't you? Thank God. Uh, for salvation. I'm glad uh, that He has saved me. It says to be saved from uh, destruction, uh, to be saved from evil. Amen. Thank God that I've been saved from hell. Amen. Somebody help me. I know you. You hell, Hell's got to be worse than what you're thanking Him for. Thank God. Amen. Praise Jesus' holy name that I don't have to die and go to hell. I've got salvation through Jesus Christ. We don't have to go to hell. But you know what else? I don't have to go through the great tribulation. Thank God. My Bible tells me, and if you got the same version I got, it says we are not what? Appointed unto wrath. Uh, somebody, amen. Thank you, God. That we don't have to go through that. Read in your Bible. That's the next worst thing to hell, amen. The only thing different, amen, about that crowd is when that's over, then most of them going to have to go to hell. Would you say that going to your faucet and turning the water on it being blood and you dying of thirst? Would you say that the sun's so hot that it's melting folks' skin? I mean, they're dying. Uh, animals, bees, the sting them. A creature's stinging them. And they're screaming. And they're in such pain, Sister Tina, that they go to take their life, cut their wrist, all the blood come out. They cannot die. Man, does that sound pleasant to you? Does that sound like wrath? Did God not say He would pour out His wrath in vials? Did I not just tell you, take over the service anytime you want to. If you're a child of God, we're not appointed unto wrath. Thank God, if I had to go through the great tribulation uh, to miss hell, it'd be worth going through. But thank God, our Savior, through salvation, amen. So let this help you mind, we don't, we're not appointed unto wrath. I don't have to go through no great tribulation. I don't have to go to hell. You know why? Because I'm a good fella. Did I mess up? Because of Jesus Christ and the righteousness of Him through salvation and the blood. They say, oh, that Christianity, it's an old bloody religion. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. 
the blood that he shed on Calvary, amen, Brother Mike, is my ticket. It's my ticket out of here. It's my ticket on the ship, amen. It's that same blood that's kept me on the ship, amen. It's the same blood that's going to get me through. It's the same blood that when he left the grave and he went to the Father and presented that on the mercy seat, he said, this is for Heath Ogle if he'll have it. And thank God one day I had enough sense to say, Lord, I'll have it. Thank God for salvation. I'm not appointed unto wrath. Amen. But we got, we got to get on the helmet of salvation. The devil knows he's not a dummy. Can we get a witness? I mean, the devil has been in the presence of Jesus Christ. The devil has been in the presence of an almighty God. The devil has been in the presence of the Holy Spirit. The devil was once in heaven with God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. So I would say he knows a lot of what's going on. Amen. But you know what that he does know? He knows that he cannot take our salvation. He knows he cannot take it. God has given it to us. Amen. You say, brother, how do you know he can't take it? If he could have took your salvation, you think he wouldn't have done took it? Hey man, somebody help me. I'm trying to help your mind tonight. I'm trying to give you faith. I'm trying to give you joy. I'm trying to give you peace about your salvation and your walk with God. If the devil knew he could take your salvation, you wouldn't have it 30 seconds to wane. You'd get up here from the altar and say, thank God for hope. Oh, it's gone. The devil sold it away. He has no power. Thank God he has no power to do that. Man, I couldn't go to sleep at night, Lori. Could you imagine? And, and some of this Calvinist garbage that's going on around here. Can you imagine going to bed every night and wondering if, I, if you're one of the ones? I've asked Jesus into my heart. I've asked him to save me, I believe, but I hope I'm one of them that God's predestined or I ain't going. Miserable. Miserable. If you're watching on Facebook, that's hogwash. Hey, man, don't let the devil get in your mind and take your joy and your peace. Salvation is given by Jesus Christ alone and the devil can't take it away. And let me tell you this. It ain't a predestined bunch. It's a whosoever will. Amen. I couldn't stand to go to bed, Missy, thinking, oh, God, I ain't numbered in that crowd. Or, oh, God, I'd lay down and I'd never turn the light off. I'd lay down under the 12 gauge shotgun knowing that wasn't going to help. They're trying to guard my salvation from the devil. But you know what? I can lay my head down tonight. Amen. With peace in my heart. Hey, I might worry about other things, but it ain't my salvation because, hey, the thief might come in uh, to steal and kill me during the night. Uh, they may hack me up and throw me in Lake James. Amen. But you know what? They can't touch my soul because it's not even mine. It's not theirs. It's been bought with a price. Amen. And he ain't never lost a one. Thank God that the devil can't come and steal my salvation away. I'm kept by the power of God. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Thank God I ain't wrapped up in that kind of religion where I'm worried to death. That I'm not in one of the chosen. That I got to outwork you or outwork you to get in. We're supposed to be working together. I'm going to be dead honest with you. Come on. If I was part of that crowd. I thought I had to outwork you to make it to heaven. I'd do everything I could do to foul you up. Yeah. There ain't nothing worse than going to hell. There ain't nothing worse than going to hell. Mike, if it was me and my wife and we was racing for the finish line, amen, uh, to make it to heaven or hell, I'd trip her, amen, and make heaven my home. It's that bad. But thank God it ain't like that. Uh, God didn't line it up that way. But he made a way where we could all go and we're in this thing together. And not only that, he tells me to edify you and you to edify me, Amen. I ain't trying to race you to the finish line. I'm trying my best to help get you there. And I expect you to get me there. That crowd's a fighting and a working yourself to death. They're hating one another. I'd hate you with all my heart, Ricky, if I thought you was going to get to go to heaven and I wouldn't. Somebody, am I the Lone Ranger? What kind of religion's that? I'd call you every day. I wouldn't encourage you to be at church. I'd say, Avery, won't you go fishing? I'm going to the house of God. You go fishing. 
But you know what my Bible says? If I offend one of you, that's why I try to be so careful in the pulpit. So careful. That's why when I get up here and I have to preach like it's mean sometimes out of the Word of God, I'm like, God, help me preach it with compassion. Uh, God, because you know what? My Bible tells me that if I offend one of you, I'd be better off with a millstone tied around my leg and cast into the sea. That's hopeless right there. Right? So we better be careful about offending one another. We ain't on a hundred yard dash. Hey man, we're in this thing together. My God, if I'm about to fall off the ship, somebody grab me by the ankles and pull me back on. I want us all to get there. The Bible said we're in a great race. But you know what? Sometimes... In our Christian walk, we need to look back. We see a brother or sister that ain't keeping up. That's when God gives us the okay to, to go back. You ain't staying back here about duck one. I'm getting you by the hand. We're coming on. We're going to pray about this. We're going to work through this. We're in this thing together. We started this thing together. We're going to finish it together. Amen. That's what we're here for. To help one another out. Thank God for salvation. But you know what the devil wants to do? He wants to war in your mind. He wants to war. He knows he can't take our salvation. He ain't a big dummy. He's a big jerk and I hate him, but he's not a big dummy. He can't have this. But he can have this. You know what this does? I mean, we, we like to think our heart leads us. But it really ain't. It's your mind. Your mind controls everything. Your mind controls your attitude. Your mind controls where you go. Your mind controls what you see. Your mind controls how you feel. And boy, if the devil can get in there and war around, he can just about make us incapacitated. But you know what? Just like I told you, he ain't got no rights to hear. He ain't got no rights to hear either. A lot of times it happens because we let the devil... We let him, amen, because we're not prayed up enough. We're not read up enough. I'm going to say, don't let this offend you. We got a lot of air-headed Christians. Ain't nothing going on in here. You say, what do you mean, brother? Remember David? Man after God's own heart. What happened? He got idle. Idle time will destroy your mind. Idle time will destroy your mind. When Stephen's dad passed away, he called me that day and he said, Brother, I won't be at church tonight. And I was like, Man, I totally understand. I'll be praying for you. I'll be praying for you. He had no more hung up and coming back. He said, I'll be there. He said, What was I thinking? He said, That's where I get my strength. That's where I get my help, amen. It's from the house of God. He said, I'm hurt, but I'll be there, amen. We ain't going to give yourself no idle time. Old David, when he should have been out there with the kings, when he should have been out there in the battlefield, you know what he did? He said, boys, I believe I'll take my helmet off. Stay home today. Got to sit there in the house, had the helmet of salvation off. And first thing he did, no devil come into his mind. Now, he didn't take David's salvation he didn't start there, but as soon as old David had some idle time and took his old helmet off and laid it down, the old devil got in his mind. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. There's a father up above who is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Old David wasn't where he wasn't supposed to be. He's supposed to be in the battle. It's supposed to be in the men. If you're in the battle and got the whole armor on, you got your helmet on, don't you? Yeah. Old devil can't get in there. But he said, I'm going to stay home today. He got idle. The devil come in. Let his little eyes see what he wasn't supposed to see. Then the devil started talking to him. You know what David should have went in there and done? He should have went down in the closet and grabbed that helmet and stuck it on. Said, my God, get the devil out of my head. Lord, the devil's coming at me in my head, Lord. And Lord, sanctify my eyes, sanctify my mind. God, show me your salvation. God, help me. But you know what he did? He let the devil come talk to him. David, you're the king. You're the king. You can have anything you want. 
It'll be all right. Maybe David fought back and said, no, I ain't going to do that, Satan. I ain't going to do that. I'll help you keep it a secret. David, you know. You know your wife ain't been treating you right. You know when the devil's going to show you something like that? Men, listen up here. You know when the devil's going to show you that woman down there at work when you ain't got your helmet on? And it's going to be right at the right time when your wife's been hateful at home. Amen. Burnt supper, it wasn't no good. You just told her about it. Next thing you know, you're fussing and fighting. You say, this is common. This is everyday stuff that happens every day. We can get up here and preach philosophy so deep and theology so deep and we can say, hey, it's the Word of God and it won't help you a bit. Or we can preach right down where we live, amen, and where we go every day and it'll help us out. You can have all that high-minded stuff because I can't understand it. I just got to understand old redneck preaching that's going to help me tomorrow. So when the devil throws a snare in my way, I've got my helmet on, amen. And I can say, hey, my preacher told me about that. I heard about that. I'm going to flee from that. That's what makes us better Christians is putting it right down there where the rubber meets the road. Or your husband comes in from work and he's mad and hateful. Talk to you like a dog and... Well, you just got your hair done. Went and spent $150 on a hairdo. Got them $75 fingernails on. Come on. Hey, Amen. Got them lips all painted up red. And I mean, you just can't wait for your man. And he stomps in the house. He didn't even really pay no attention to my hairdo. Guess he didn't like my fingernails. But you know what's going to happen, boy, tomorrow at work. There's going to be some old whoremonger come by and say, boy, your hair sure looks pretty. Boy, your them fingernails are nice. You look so nice. Does your husband tell you that every day? No, he don't. I saw your rascal didn't pay attention to none of that. And you noticed every bit of it. Well, you deserve better than that. You're so pretty, you're too good for him. Amen. You know what that is? That's the devil getting in your mind. You say, get behind me, Satan. Hey, ladies, if some man's talking to you like that at work, you say, you slow foot worker of the devil, you get behind me. Amen. If you, pay, if you keep on and you agging that on and you liking that, you're guilty as they are. You better go somewhere and get in the closet. Amen. And pray that God will get that out of your mind. If you're enjoying that, you're wrong. Amen. You better go home and shave your head, shave your eyebrows off, uh, break your fingernails off, because it's better to enter into heaven maimed, amen. Right, that's right. Amen. amen, I'm telling you right. This is right down where we live. It's the stuff we deal with every day. Better be a Joseph and not a David. That old hag went to grab him. He run out of there. She was tearing his clothes off trying to get him. But you know what he did? He locked her down in four wheel low. Kept digging brother. Till he got away. A lot of you. Some woman come on to you like that. You're going to throw it in reverse. Throw the mercy break on. I enjoy this. You're making me feel good. That's the devil getting in your mind. You know what he does when he gets hurt? Then you come home. You're hateful to your husband. He's hateful to you. Next thing you know, it ain't no time somebody's a cheating on somebody. Amen. And then you end up in divorce court and God destroys your home. If he can destroy your home, he can destroy the church. Better get our minds right. If that entices you, you're wrong. You need to get in the altar. Romans. 12 and 2 says, be not conformed to this world, amen. I'm glad I don't fit in. I'm glad I don't feel right. I'm glad I don't, I don't want to go to no concerts. Country music. I'm just going to hit that while I'm plowing, amen. If you're a Christian and a child of God, you ain't got no business going to country music concerts, amen. It ain't right. It ain't godly. And you can sit here and talk to me till you're blue in the face. If Jesus come back and you're right there, you'd be embarrassed. You'd be embarrassed. Them throwing beer all over you, singing ungodly songs, amen. But Christians will go out there and then have the gall to put it on Facebook. You ain't living right. 
Amen, Heath, that's the truth. You need to say, God, help me. God, help me. It ain't right. Be not conformed of this world. Amen. But be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm glad when God got a hold of me, he saved my heart. Amen. Did he begin to transform my mind? It didn't happen overnight, Lori. It didn't happen overnight. There was somebody talking about a young Christian in a church and said, well, they got saved, but they ain't this and this. I said, just give them time, amen. The transforming of the mind takes a while. Salvation is instant. Amen. Somebody help me. I didn't have to work my way in. When Jesus told me that lifeline and put me in the boat, I was saved, amen. But I wasn't his number one sailor. I had to learn. I had to learn. A lot of folks, they want to see a young Christian like that. They want to see him as a top mate right off the bat. Somebody got to learn to swab the deck first. And you know what you're doing when you're out there swabbing the deck? You don't know a whole lot, but you're watching the other folks. They ain't learning this from me. They're learning from you. They're learning from you. Thank God for the renewing of the mind. Over here. Isaiah says, thou shalt keep in perfect peace. That's a good place to be, ain't it? Hey, somebody help me. Talk back to me. Thou shalt be in perfect peace. If I could pray, amen, something to God, it would be God let me be in perfect peace. Because if you're in perfect peace, nothing else matters. You can be broke as a joke, amen, and be in perfect peace and be happy. Your family can hate you. Your kids can hate you. They can hate church. They can hate the man of God. But if you're in perfect peace, that's all that matters. We can have it. Whose mind is stayed on thee. Amen. You want perfect peace? Keep your mind on Jesus. We can't keep our mind on Jesus five minutes out of our I'm not fussing at you. We're just carnal. He told the disciples, he said, can you not even watch him pray for an hour? I mean, gee, you would think, my God, did Jesus right there in the flesh? That there'd be something so spectacular. But there's right in the presence of Jesus, getting to hear him pray in the row of our sleep. Then they wake up and things going on that are coming to get Jesus. They're in a panic. You know why they wasn't in perfect peace? Because they couldn't keep their minds stayed on him. If we want perfect peace, we've got to keep our mind on Jesus. Let me get back to where I was going. Our headed Christians. You know what? We've got everything else going on in our head except for the things of Jesus. If we will fill our mind, the Bible says to pray without ceasing. To pray without ceasing. If we go around, brother, you're praying without ceasing, amen. Then we're going to have perfect peace because our mind is going to be on him. It's when we get in the state of David and let our mind get somewhere else. And that's when the devil comes in and takes that peace, takes that joy, brings in the doubt and the worry, amen. If you want perfect peace, Keep your mind on Him. Our mind controls our body. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, For as he thanketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. Amen. Whatever I'm thinking and whatever's in my heart, that's who I am. But if I want perfect peace, I'll keep my mind on him. Let me hurry up. I'm done taking way too much time. Here's where Satan really wants to attack your mind. First off, Ephesians 4 and 22 says, put off concerning the former conversation of this old man. Most folks can't get past that right there. Conversation ain't changed. Talk ain't changed. You know why? Because they ain't had a transformation of the mind. You've got to pray to get that. You've got to fight. You've got to get in the word. You've got to get in prayer. For the former things, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed by the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which is after God and created in his righteousness. Right quick, let me tell you what Satan wants to attack and how he does it. He wants to come with you first with doubt. If Satan can make you doubt, he can make you miserable. At the funeral the other day. 
A lady met me in the parking lot. Two ladies come up to me. And God give me this, and I appreciate God giving me this because I've used it throughout my whole time that God's called me to preach here and there. Two ladies come up to me, and they said, oh, we ain't heard preaching like that in years. I said, what's well, a shame? I ought to be preached everywhere. Amen. Amen. I don't know what they're hearing. Ain't nothing special going on here but the word of God, amen. But I don't know what to hear. But they said, you know, we've battled for years doubting, our, doubting my salvation. And that lady said, I have too. That's where the devil wars with me the worst is making me doubt. Amen. And I said, let me help you. I said, did you ever doubt before you got saved? She said, no, I ain't never thought of that. I said, well, I didn't either until God gave it to me. And I said, now I'm giving it to you. Amen. How in the world can you doubt your salvation before you get it? And if you get it, I just told you Satan can't take it. If we continue in the faith, amen, he'll present us holy, reproved. And they go on. He wants to make you doubt. How does he do that? First of all, he wants to pervert the truth. How does he do that? Through your friends. Everybody's always got one of them friends. Son, they can quote the Bible frontwards to backwards, but it's no Bible I ever heard. <laughs> Son, they'll just, they'll just make it up any which way. And man, it'll sound good. Yeah. I've had people quote me stuff, act like it's scripture. Me go back home and get my Bible and it just ain't in there. Yeah. But you know what? The devil will bring somebody come right by and just quote you something sound just like the word of God. Try to foul you up and pervert the truth. Yeah. He'll use preachers carrying a so-called Bible. They're standing in a pulpit in front of a congregation. You know what Paul called them? Hirelings. <laughs> you know how many people, I don't mean just one or two a year, Doug. How many people, I'll be talking to somebody and they'll be like, well, how's your family? Yeah, my daughter's going to school. She's in the medical field. Yeah, my son's going to go to school. I, I think he wants to be a preacher. Well, boy, man, he wanted to be a diesel mechanic, but they wouldn't accept him down after diesel school, so he's going to seminary. I think he's going to be a preacher now. Be a good job for him. Hey, raising hirelings. This ain't no payday. This ain't no job. It's a calling, brother laddie. It's a calling. I appreciate what the church pays me. I appreciate what they do for me, amen. And I believe you ought to be good to the man of God. But I'd do it if I had to come in here and pay you to let me preach it, amen. Because I want to be in God's will, amen. 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 Hirelings will come and pervert the truth, amen. amen. Third thing, and this might be worse than doubt. Discouragement. Discouragement. God, I could preach on that. Maybe the Lord will help me do a series on that. Discouragement and depression. But when you get discouraged, all you want to do is just sit down and hang your harp on the wheel. Thank God that's when we've got to dig deep and rely on each other. That's when we've got to be diligent. To me watching you. So if I see you get discouraged, amen. I'm just going to say something. I hope it don't embarrass nobody. I was driving down the road. Day before yesterday, I called your brother. Driving down the road. God said, pray for Jamie right now. I was sitting there just driving down the road praying for him. I mean, I was still praying. God said, call him right now. I didn't hesitate. I picked up the phone, called him. He answered the phone. He said, preacher, you called just at the right time. Just at the right time. That ain't nothing on me. That was just me being obedient to God. He was facing something that was discouraging him. And thank God we got to talk. And through the word of God and us talking about the good things of the Lord. Amen. I got to lift him up a little bit. It's our job uh, to keep our eye on one another. Uh, so that the devil don't get in our mind and discourage us. He could have been thinking nobody cares about me. Nobody's praying about me. This situation God don't even let nobody know. But you know what God let me know. Because God knows. Because God loves. I made the phone call. Amen. Uh, to try to encourage a brother in Christ. Amen. That's how God works. And we got to be very diligent. Uh, to lift each other up because the devil wants to attack every one of us. He wants to come at us through pleasure. My Bible says, bad as I hate this verse, 
If there's a Bible, verse in the Bible that I like to quote the least, it's this one right here. There's pleasure in sin. Because the Bible says that, Doug, so it's true. It's true. Preacher, you are not saying it's the Word of God. David Melvin, the Bible says that there's pleasure in sin. If I went back and told you about my whole life before I got saved, if it was just terrible, I'd be a liar. Hey, sometimes I had some big old fun. But let's not quit on the verse right there. There's pleasure in sin for a season. And when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. But thank God, back to the salvation, I've been delivered from that. That death will never touch this body, amen. I've been delivered from the second death, amen. But he wants to come at us through pleasure and show you. Above all, he says right here, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hurry. I know this is long for a Wednesday night. But in Philippians 4, he says, finally, brother. He said, brother, what do I do when the devil comes to my mind like that? Well, I'm glad you asked because over here in Philippians 4, he says, finally, brother. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are a good report. There be any virtue. If there be any praise. Think on these things. When we get the whirling in our mind. Think on the good things. I begin to think. He said. Uh, whatsoever things are true. I wrote a few things down. Let me tell you what's true. God's still in control. God's on the throne. God has saved you. Satan can't destroy us. Jesus is coming soon. He's a very present help. He's our shield. He's our refuge. He's our peace. He's our rock. He's our son coming king. Amen. And this is the truth. Amen. Whatsoever things are honest, it ain't the devil. That's right. He's a liar and the father of it and there's no truth in him. Whatsoever things are a good report, God is good. Amen. And he's went away and went away to prepare a place for those that love him. And you know what? He's coming again. Amen. He's coming again. Amen. And I'm looking for him, ain't you? Amen. I'm on the ship. I was watching an old movie last night and they was on the ship and it got dark and they couldn't see. Just like that in my life sometimes. But you know what? They stayed on board. They stayed on board. They said, boy, it's a run of bad luck. There ain't no wind. It's dark. We can't see. I remember Paul going through that, don't you? Oh, yeah. Somebody using the pirate movie. <laughs> but all of a sudden, amen, they seen the sun coming up. Man, just because it gets dark, gosh, don't jump ship, amen. There's coming a day, amen. Well, we're going to see the S.O. in. Hey, man, I want to be on board, don't you? Think on those things. We're so wrapped up, carnally minded, on our bank accounts, on our homes, on our yards, on our cars, on our kids' sports, on how we look at the workplace, that we totally forget the good things of God. When the devil starts warring on your mind, think on those things that are true. I'm going to close right here with this verse right here. Though the outward man perish. I look at myself in the mirror every day. And I hate getting old. I hate it. Man, what I wouldn't give to be 18 or 21 again. I love to rip and rear and go and not hurt. I could have smacked Bo right in the back of the head when he came up here to get in the choir. He got up from out and said, oh, I'm getting old. I, I, sh I should have kicked him right in the teeth. <laughs> But though this outward man perish, yet, you know what yet means? Up until now, but at a particular time. <laughs> though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day. The, you know what the yet is? I just told you yet it's a particular time. Though the, at day by day. So you know what God's going to do to me tomorrow? You know what he's going to do the day after tomorrow? You know what he's going to do Saturday? That's a promise. That's a promise. 
So think on those good things. That are you might be battling it today, but if you stay in the will of God, He will be there with us. And He's going to give us enough. Hey, you might have to fight it tomorrow, Jamie. But yet, you'll be renewed tomorrow. You'll be able to stand another day. I don't know many wars there's one in a day, do you? Him old soldiers that fight all day. You know what? Can't make another mile. But they'd go back to the barracks and they'd get them something to eat and something to drink and get them some good fellowship. Somebody encourage them up good. You know what they'd do at daylight? They'd be out there on the battlefield. We got a cause. We got a cause, church. I hope you got something out of the word of God tonight. Don't let the devil ruin your salvation with doubt, depression. We are over. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. All right, let's stand and be dismissed. Take that with you tomorrow and fight the devil off with it. Amen. Tanner, would you dismiss us in prayer?